analyzed Unit 7. It was about making decisions or mechanisms that some people do in order to come up with a final decision and make their own mind. So we had homework page uh, 109, activity number 8. Remember, we stopped at this part. Okay, I told you, look at the vocabulary uh, chart above and start uh, to fill in the spaces using one of these words. Okay, let's see it here. Did you do, I, I told you I need uh, exercise A, B, C, and D. A, B, and D as homework. Did you do this? Hopefully not. <laughs> Okay. Who's going to start? This is this is right. Wisdom of the crowd. Yes. Wisdom of the crowd. Okay. Surfa, can you start? Just a minute. Okay. James Swarovski, prediction markets clearly illustrate his thesis that crowds can make better prediction, predictions than a think tank. Yeah, so thesis. And he said, what's the meaning of thesis? Um, theory. The, uh, clay, yeah, claim. Yeah. Unproven claim that needs some evidence and justification in order to be verified or not. Okay, number two. In prediction markets, no individual opinions are exclusive. Oh, excluded, sorry. Excluded. Everyone can give an opinion. Good one. Are excluded. Now, did you all do the homework? Okay, number three. Number three. Mariam, did you do the homework? Okay. Also, since the group's decision is arrived at uh, enforcement. At what? Now, what do you think? You didn't do the homework. Okay, please do the homework. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Number three. Uh, also, since the group decision is arrived at is exclusion, no one is forced to change their opinion. Because he said that they stopped it because he excluded all the wrong answers and he kept only the mean and he took the mean or something like that. Oh. Ah. Yeah. At concession. Okay. No. Uh, number four, since the group does not need to reach a consensus, there is no pressure to conform or consent to the thinking of a few dominant members of the group. Exactly. And we said consensus means? Agreement. Agreement. And conform means? Uh, all agree to something. Yeah. Unanimous agreement. Exactly. By uh, all people. All people agree. And confirm, conform and confirm the peace of Assure, assure. They assure. Okay, so this is to check your answers. Okay. Number, number five. Who's going to do number five? Turfo? Yes, please. Um, Swarovski feels that prediction markets have important um, enforcement for. Important, mm -hmm. yes. Implication. Implication. Said, what's, what's the meaning of implication? Uh, I guess, I just forgot. Uh, implications means? Uh, involving something. So implication here means involvement and huh? referring to as it affects and it involves uh, number the following one. Who can answer the following one? Yes. Critics complain that there are ways to manipulate predict prediction markets. Nonetheless, economists find these markets highly inter interesting. Exactly. Um, Nevertheless, however, all of these. Excellent. Okay, so number seven. Who can answer number seven? Hmm. Uh, the Iowa Electronics.
Electronics Market, sponsored by the University of Iowa, has predicted the results of presidential elections with more statistical accuracy than traditional polling methods 75% of the time. Okay, so more statistical. Yeah, exactly. And then I ask you to prepare this part about the word implicate and imply. Actually, both implicate and imply take the noun form as implication. Both of them takes the noun form as implication. And both actually impl implicate like, uh, Jean? E no, no, what, what's your name again, sorry? Yeah, Lida. Yeah, like Lida said, implicate means involve. And imply means referring to something or referring to the meaning of something but indirectly. Like, what's what can be inferred from our conversation? The heading meaning. So imply, what can be implied, what can be inferred from our conversation means the words that weren't uttered specifically or clearly. Yeah, not straightforward, not stated clearly. Okay? So number B is asking you to do this. Write the sentences using a form of implicate or imply and compare the, your answer. So you need to search for the word that gives the meaning of imply or implicate, like involve or refer indirectly here like this. For example, it means to state something indirectly. So if the word means stating something indirectly or involve, you're going to replace it with the imply or implicate or implication if it's a noun form. Yeah. Are you applying this that I'm Mm-hmm. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. <laughs> exactly. So, who's going to read? Yes, Lida. Read the first one first and then transfer. The mayor was involved in a scheme that he misused public funds. Uh, the mayor was engaged in a, a program that... Uh, to no, I, don't, I want you... To, you removed involved into engaged. Right? Now, I want you to remove uh, involved and change with imply or implicate. Okay. The mayor was uh, implicated, uh, a pr again, I change other, the rest, or, uh, uh, in a, a scheme that misused public funds. Excellent. So the mayor was implicated. Instead of involved, it, it's going to be implicated. Hmm? Heba, can you do that? Um, number two, what might result from the city's plan to expand the airport? Uh, Um, what might result from the city's plan to um, employ the airport? Okay. No. no. Okay. Result from means implication. implication. Result from, this is the implication we get. So you can, can you change the result from? Um, it will be uh, implicated from the city. What might... Uh, what are implicate from the city's plan to expand the airport? Or what are some implications of uh, the city's plan to... What are some implications of the city's plan to expand the airport? What might be the implications of... Or might, what might be the implications of the city plan to expand the airport? Or He objected to the suggestion in the article that he calls the city financial crisis he implied in the article that he caused the city financial crisis. He, applied, he implied in the article that uh, he caused the city's financial crisis. It can be one. Another one. Hmm? He objected to the, to the implication in the article that he caused the city financial crisis. Exactly. You, we can say another good one. We, he objected to the implication in the article, or he objected to the article's implication. Uh, exactly. Or the article's Im implication. Both are correct. Number four. Yes. Uh, corrupt building inspectors were partially to blame for the building's uh, collab uh, collapse. Um, corrupt building inspectors were um, implicated for the building collapse. Were, were implicated in the building's collapse. Um, 
um, the last one. The report uh, insinuates that, that the city council is not working hard enough. Uh, the, art the report uh, implies that, that the city council is not working hard enough. Excellent. The, uh, the report implies that the city council is not working hard enough. Okay. Then we come to stating a thesis. How you make a thesis? How you phrase a thesis which is unproven claim and then try to make some uh, uh, supporting ideas and evidences in order to verify it. So here I want you to go back to the readings about uh, in Plank, uh, Malcolm Gadwell, and uh, Wisdom of the Crowd, and try to make a thesis. How you are going to make the thesis for the whole article from the thesis statement in the introduction? So go back to the introductory paragraph in both readings. Again, this was homework. <laughs> okay. So go back to the introduction of both readings, reading one and reading two. Try to allocate the thesis statement. The thesis statement, it's the statement that bears the meaning, the main idea. It bears the main idea of the whole essay. And transfer the thesis into a thesis, like, not thesis statement, like hypothesis. Okay? I want you to start your thesis or your hypothesis like this. In Plink, Malcolm Gadwell claims that. This is from the thesis statement in the introduction. And the, in the wisdom of the crowd, James Sukers argues that. In Blink, Malcolm Gladwell claims that decisions that are made very quickly can be very bit as good as decisions made uh, continuously and deliberately. Good one. Another one. Another thesis for reading one. Sorry. Another thesis for reading one. Huh? From the introduction only. Another thesis. After, however, is that the red uh, decks are in a uh, minefield. Okay, but this is, this is uh, an example, okay? Yeah. So this is not the thesis. What about this one? I think you can win by only taking cards. Okay, what did you get on the whole? I nothing. Okay. <laughs> so what did you get from the whole passage? Exactly. This is not an. This is for introducing the topic, but this is not the thesis. The thesis is not in this paragraph at all. Read the following one. Hmm. They found what? Yes, they found that uh, after we turned over about 50 cards, most uh, and until I think. Uh, yeah, then we come to develop a hypothesis. I think. Where is the hypothesis? We yes, hypothesis uh, means thesis. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and the second one, wisdom of the crowd. Wisdom of the crowd. Okay. Uh, there was James Swarovski argues that collective thinking is not the best way to make decisions. Exactly. And? Mm, and? Sometimes? 
uh, he was talking about the experts, that experts, experts are always to be advised. Okay. So sometimes. <laughs> other? Other thesis? Other thesis? Yeah. Another thesis? In the wisdom of crowds, James Soro, what is it? Sir Wiki argues that uh, the best way for a group to be smart is for each person in it to think and act as independently as possible. This is a good one. Okay, each one in a group. Okay, each one should think and act individually. Okay. You have the next one. The next one. Okay. So this is a. Suggested answers, but again, this uh, answers might vary like what you have presented to me now. So this is a suggested answer that in the first one, the blink, uh, Gangwell claims that we underestimate the accuracy of snap judgment and first impressions. However, they later some researchers have proven that uh, this is sometimes true. Okay, the first impression, the first. Uh, remember, we talked about hunch. Okay, the hunch, our, our intuition, sometimes is right. And in the wisdom of uh, of the crowd, he argues that collective judgments can be quite accurate under certain circumstances, which is acting individually, acting and reflecting individually. Okay. The following one. Collocation. As I told you, collocation are very important. At the very, at the end of each unit, we have tables for collocation. This is very important to see that this noun can come with that verb. These uh, or this verb can come with these adjectives. This is very important to know this sort of uh, coining together. They coin together. Okay. So I want you now to complete this exercise. But I want you to tell me what word exactly to, uh, give you a hint, okay? Which word exactly give you a hint to fill in with this word? Okay, so far you were about to answer. So, answer and tell me which word from the communication system you use and you don't want other words. The dominant mode of transportation within the campus was bicycles. Um, the key word is transport. She decided to fill in the plank with mode because mode of transportation. Can you see here? Mode of transportation. Okay. Good one. Another option. Okay. Where? Dominant. Dominant. The dominant option. Where? It can be, but we're, we're talking about collocation based on the table. Yeah, it can be. Why not option? But based on the collocation of the table here. I want you to fill in based on the collocation mentioned in this uh, table. Hmm? Okay. Yes. The article furnished some uh, rather surprising statistic yes. on the education. And okay. Why did you... Because uh, of the word surprising? surprising? Exactly, because of the word surprising. Good one. Mm. Ladies, I want you all to. Sorry? At all. Okay, fill in the blanks here with words from these based on the collocation. They coin together. These words coin together. Like mode, yeah, dominant mode of transportation. And now surprising statistics. Can you see? It's so easy. Okay. Uh, Charles, uh, participation in the program requires the consent of the participants. Because of? Requires. Parents. Good one. Can you see? It's just to study the collocation. It would be very easy for you to form sentences. This is part of sentence structure. Uh, a child's participation in the pro. In the, oh, the new the new regulations received a very negative response from the state's business um, response because of the positive negative. Yeah. Excellent. Because of the word negative. Huh? The business failed when it was unable to adapt to changing markets. Changing means adapting. 
uh, the word changing and adapting. Adapting to changing. Mm -hmm. The following one. Uh, they examined the available options and decided to sell the company to one of their competitions. Excellent. Options. What, what made you decide? Um, because it says decided to sell company one of their, one of their competitions. Options so one of their options to choose from. Good one. Uh, it's easy now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Can you figure it out? Business has no choice but to confirm to the new regulations or start doing business in the state. Regulation. Regulation. Excellent. Huh? As of yet, uh, the state has no uh, mechanism uh, for enforcing its regulation rules and uh, standards, and it looks like they're not putting enough standards. For yeah. Good one. Okay. Now, exercise E. Sorry? Yeah. No, no. We're going to start now. Exercise E. In exercise E, I want you to. Yeah, form sentences. Yeah, this is this is to check your answer. And in exercise E, I want you to see these words and form sentences. This is very good for uh, sentence structure, building your sentence. Okay. So exercise E, we have the word usual, for example, mode and travel. So you can um, you can come up with a sentence like this: uh, the usual mode of travel was by car or bus. Okay, so it's up to you. Just write an appropriate sentence that gives meaning for or uh, cover all the meaning, for, uh, all these words adapt to the changing situation where. Okay. Number two, uh, we must adapt to the changing situation no matter what. We must adapt to the changing situation, situation no matter what. Uh, the IT department collected statistics on how many students submitted their TMAs on time. Good one. Okay. Uh, generate. Generate as much as you can. Just make sentences. Uh, ladies. Wait for you. Uh, Elicit a favorable response when? Okay, just think about it. You can tell me. Hmm. Elicit? So elicit, okay. Like, for example, I want you to figure out the answer. I'm eliciting the answer from you. Okay, to deduce. Okay, but get it from others to elicit. Make others figure it out, and you get the response, elicit the response, get the response from others. Okay. Uh, for example, here I'm eliciting the answers from you. This is elicit. Gather, collecting. Yeah, gathering, collecting. Uh, can you do this? The Minister, uh, the Minister of Education collected statistics of, uh, about how many students failed this course. Okay, excellent. Good one. I want to answer number five. I want to answer number three. Okay, number three. <laughs> encouragement, uh, constant encouragement, encouragement to children, elicit favorable response in education. Elicit favorable responses favorable in education. Good one. Can I answer number five now? What about number four? No one wants to do number four? Okay, so she reserved five, you reserved six. What about four? I need someone to do number four. Okay, no, this is three. Illicit? Exactly. Good for you. Um, uh, he needed to obtain the consent of her father before proposing. Good one. He needed to obtain the consent of her father before proposing. Good one. 
he okay, needed the consent, the agreement of her father before proposing, proposing for engagement. This is a good one. Okay, so uh, a student at uh, AOU University, uh, the, the only option that they face is confirm the standard, uh, confirm to standards of the university. Confirm to the standards of university, of the university. Good one. Huh? Any other sentences? Do you need to do anything else? Can we start Unit 8 now? Okay. So, thank you. We're going to start Unit 8. And of course, we have presentation. We have homework. I'm going to give you the other uh, the exercise for uh, reading 2 as homework. So, you're going to start reading 2, right? So, let me start first reading 1. They are going to present... Yeah. Huh? Okay, before we start A. things go and you just do it by yourself because you have to understand when people posted that online they did that by themselves they didn't have Google so you search through hands-on active yeah and you have to like do it by your own learn gain experience and make it by yourself that's how it's called success not all things can be achieved and not all things can be implemented sometimes uh, you ha you're facing dangerous situation you can do it by yourself but you can just search about others who have well, for me like my own experience when that happened to me um, I didn't go to internet um, there's like this human insect inside you this is the one which got uh, and later on when I googled it I found out oh that's what I was supposed to so I actually made it right without I even know how it goes lucky you but yeah. what about confirming and uh, making sure that your conclusion or what you're doing is right I just do what I feel what about uh, what about verifying uh, referencing your effort. Well, that makes me look at the future. And for every, uh, you have to like for every action, there's a consequence. So I have to always, before I do it, I think of the consequences that might happen if it's going to hurt anybody or not, and it's going to hurt the society I live in or not. If it's not, I'm just going to go for it. And if I have two choices with, uh, which are both damaging, I have to take the less damaging. It's about getting, gaining knowledge. Where do you get your knowledge? The experience, totally experience. Don't read books, articles, journals, and it comes from your, your experience, your personal experience. Uh, from others as well, of course. From like talking to them, interacting with them. This is a circle. This is a very limited circle. Yeah. On newspapers and stuff, yeah. So you read. You read. Google, like, hey, what's up? Like, 
have to like do it first and then, I mean you, you, like what are you trying to say is like oh what do you do for sex number one google it no number one is googling for me is like number 10 or 11 there's like lots of procedures to do before like google this is one of the options they resort to for newspaper you uh, go to the street and in the news, uh, uh, newspaper stall and buy newspaper or no you can do it online okay so most of us agree, not all of us, yeah. most of us agree <laughs> that we Google a lot. Okay, good one. So today we're going to talk about the search engine which is Google and we're going to learn some uh, how to develop our, analyze and develop our criteria, standards and norms to judge selection. Yeah, okay. Google? Okay. We will see. these words now. Do you find any of them unfamiliar? Do you find any word unfamiliar or... Huh? Which one? Way the opposite. You're biased to someone, that means you're with them. If they're right, they're wrong. It doesn't really matter. You give subjective opinion rather than neutral or objective opinion. Okay? And the opposite means to counteract or stand against something or. Standing against. Yes. I do not gen regularly use it. No, it's like it's not a word that would occur in my daily conversation. <laughs> okay? Maybe for academic. Sometimes, because this is academic, this is this word was so academic word. When we use, we use uh, everyday language like words. But in academic English, we need to use academic words like this. Okay, that's why it's a good start to start switching the uh, informal words into formal synonyms. Entrepreneur? Yeah. Mm. Pay it forward. I like this movie. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The act, the character of Kevin Spacey, the vocal, the his word list is amazing. The, it's amazing. Like he used this even in his normal speech in everyday language conversation. He uses this technical. So guys, whomever has never seen Pay It Forward, I won't. I like it. I cried so much when that little boy died in the end. Okay, I came. He was a vocabulary. Okay. Um, I have an English friend, and he's 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 like 19, and he uses three main words in his daily life. He never ever has today without using them. Tremendous, spectacular, uh, interesting. He, he cannot literally live one day without using the three of them, or one of them at least, with his British accent. Excellent, excellent. Good for him. <laughs> this is a good one. Other words, huh, before we move? This is good. The way when he used the word immense when he was talking, when he was talking about when his father burned him. The, 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 yeah. It's amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah when he said friend. Satisfaction in his dad's eyes when he was burning. That was so sad. I know. 
Even the uh, moral lesson from this movie, uh, Pay It Forward, it's very uh, attaching and humanistic. Actually, it's very humanistic. So, every one of us. So, let's go to the three questions. Here we're saying, when you hear the name Goggle, do you have a positive or negative feeling? Clearly, Hiba has no negative feeling. Okay. And, or neutral. So, you can... Avoid bias by being neutral, not positive, not negative, but something in between, neutral, okay? So, tell me, do you have positive or negative? <laughs> I, I basically Google everything, and I, I usually use Wikipedia, which is more... Uh, more exactly, but all, all not verified. Academically, all websites... All these sites, and specifically Wikipedia and the Encyclopedia Britannica, they are not very, not sure. Of course, but it's always good to know where people, we, exactly. Or knowledge from this. Exactly why I stopped using Google that much. I mean, I, I love technology. I work in Microsoft. It's like my everything in my home. Google is used for everything. Okay, it, how could you gain, like... How could you like gain? I mean, it's like it's in some way it's killing that life, like um, human experience of gaining experience in your life by your own way. You have to do stuff wrong so you can learn. When you Google everything, like literally everything, you take that pleasure of, you know, messing around stuff. You have pleasure of making a memory that once upon a time I did this and it got screwed. You know what I mean? So I mean, I know it's positive. It's a good thing you have it, but it's it depends on the. Yeah, it depends on how people use it. Yeah. Uh, I have a positive feeling about that because I think uh, Google now, uh, before Google, we had uh, we faced with difficulty to search and find something. But now um, uh, Google make it uh, more organized, and um, I, I think now uh, the world becomes more smaller. Uh, and for example, before you wanted to search for something for your uh, paper or something, you had to go uh, to, the uni uh, to the university library or uh, city library and to open lots of book or carry that. But now, you just uh, go to a scholar, yes, and Google it and find lots of uh, uh, papers, uh, books that... Exactly. This is what Google ha has done in order to make it, uh, to, to make what it publishes or what it has uh, verified and refreed. They use e-books. They take the, uh, yeah, they take the, uh, some, sometimes, what we call not permission, uh, a protocol, signed protocol with some publisher to offer online free books for uh, the public and advertising, uh, adver and they advertise for other books like Amazons.com, for example. My um, position, I think it's more positive than negative, but I am not uh, just using a Google, you know, I try to read books or uh, whatever I, but if, uh, at the, I think at the university it can be a help and it can save your time, you know, but I would like also the library, you know, I don't It's preferable, it, it's not your first option, it, usually internet resources shouldn't be your first option in researching. To be a good researcher, you have to depend on books, verified books, books and journals, uh, articles, case studies, theses, and uh, dissertations, and all of these. And you can resort to uh, Google. Huh? is the one I support because, uh, like you said, books are everywhere online now. You can just like, copy-paste. No effort anymore. You can't feel what you did. You can just forget it the moment you just submit it. I mean, that's, I, I, I agree on her uh, attitude because you gain the best of both. Like, why not? Why not? You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so it's an option, but not the only option we have to research. Uh, when I talked about Google, I meant daily life use, daily, they like researching a song or something. Or, exactly, but if, if I'm speaking, speaking of academic uh, uh, writing or academic uh, 
So we're talking about everyday use and academic use. Yeah, I won't go to Google for, for academic use. No, I would go to somewhere. Other than no, no, again, it's good to go, yeah, but as an option, a second or third option. But you know, they for academics. They gave you options. It has the Google, the regular Google, and then you have Google Books, and you have Google Academic, and yes. you have Google. So, yes, so it's, it's, it's actually a good, a very good, uh, uh, very useful. Okay. I was one of the people who had a, like a huge shelf, bookshelf in our house. We had the American Encyclopedia and the Britannica Encyclopedia. Throughout the 90s, whenever I, had, I, had, I encountered an essay or a subject or a topic that, okay, school asked us to, yeah, I would run to the Britannica or run to the American Encyclopedia and search, to the, and search through those books for the things I wanted. Now, since, we had, since these books have like update update themselves annually. Okay, I cannot have all of them. I cannot keep buying them. Nor my father, nor my brother. Who, who's so you resorted to e-library. Okay. Once the internet started introducing itself to my life, okay, that made that made a huge, like, a, not a huge shift, a huge change. Okay, my books are still there. The knowledge in them, I still go to them. But this... This is not a shift. My books are always there when I need something to read, to, like I am 100% that this is something I read. This something is not online because let's say it's outdated or it's protected by royalty. Okay, I have the book. But there are a lot of, a lot of aspects, a lot of things that I have to look for and update it like the maps, the YouTube if I want to see a video, if I want to see an interview. I cannot see an interview in a book. I would, I would love, I would love not, I'm a, I'm a fan, I, I'm a fan of the internet, but I love books, like, I still buy books to read, I don't like buying them online, or, or, you know, having a Kindle to read on, I like having the book in my hand, flipping the pages, and yes, I love that, but like, I would, I would love, okay, the investment is there, it is offering you the option of saving your time, and effort. Saving your time and effort. Okay, yes, and space. I, I have to, I have to take into account, yeah, I have to, I have to take into account that, okay, SkyDrive storage spaces are way better than already cramming up my, my whole living, my whole living room with books that I, that I rarely use, actually that I rarely access unless I had, like, I'm reading for enjoyment or I am reading for academics. Plus the fact, if we're talking about Google in specific, Google, Google gives me email accounts, Google gives me storage space on the internet so that I would, okay, it gives me, it gives me a very good, a very good results when I'm searching for a particular thing, because other, I used to use the uh, AOL and Yahoo when the internet first, first showed up, and every time that I searched for a specific topic, it did not give me the thing that I was searching for. Even searching online search engines has shifted greatly. It even forced other companies, yeah, it even, Google forced other search engines to develop themselves to offer me the exact thing that I'm searching for. Be competitive. Yeah. I'm all for Google, but I would love if someone came up with something called the Endless Encyclopedia, where I would pay like, like for example, I would pay like a thousand KD, and then I'd have endless encyclopedias delivered to my house every year. Hard copy. Hard, yeah. hard copy. I just turn my bedroom into sh endless shelves of books, and I just sleep on the couch. Okay. <laughs> Good for you. Um, I think <clears throat> about Google. It's uh, it's re to the person and his use the user the user. But I love in Google something. When I want to search about something, he 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 give me something related which make me, make me want to search more and more. I love it. Uh, Google Maps, exactly. No, I have a positive attitude with Google. Like, I think it's a brilliant uh, thing that they did. Um, because... Really, that's ev what everybody knows, Google. Like, something when you're comfortable with it, you don't want to, you know, like, A A O L. Like, I would never use that, even if Google was bad. Like, I don't, like, I'm comfortable with Google, because once I type in the word, I get, like, 400,000 searches. 
As for that, I have to look for it myself. Okay, so what about yeah? And it's 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 gonna be absolute one day. <laughs> but it's gonna be sure it's gonna be absolute one day. So Google search engine is so successful that it collects billions of dollars of revenue each year. Yet, yeah. Okay, we're going to learn now how they are going, how they make money. This is our topic. Yes, its search engine is free. So, where do you imagine Google's revenue comes from? This is your question, Gina. Where? Because every time you search on Google, you get half of the results are actual results, and the other half is advertisements. Uh, for example, if you were searching uh, hair. You'll get shampoo, and it's probably the, the first one you get is the, the, high, the highest paid because other companies would pay company it would pay Google to publish yes to publish their good one. Huh? I'll come back to you. Well, yeah, she is kind of right, um, but it's not like an ad. It's like um, our product is good, so we want you to make us a priority in the search engines, and we pay you for that. Another way is um, the books that you mentioned before. Them, some of them are very, very valuable, and many of them are not even like allowed to be touched, like in real life. So they literally scan it for Google. Um, also, certain pages only. Um, 3D maps on Google Earth. Um, this might be a little sensitive, especially for countries like Israel and the United States, because it shows some certain uh, military positions. So they pay them to not reveal or show that in public. Um, additionally to YouTube, um, when you put some uh, search in YouTube and you cross a limit line uh, of viewers and a limit time, they pay you for that so you can stay and remain as a user and they share like points with you. And talk. They have some uh, stock in markets. Google has some uh, stock markets, and they started. They were recently uh, signed up with Facebook, and they will be in 2016 together in one uh, stock market. So. They own Exactly. Good one. Marion. Huh? Uh, companies make their money off of shares. Um, they sell their shares for like a hundred. Let's see. Yeah. Like Google, they they sold 22 million and they got 23 billion dollars. So. Nasdaq. Remember we we talk about Nasdaq uh, stock market, which means he'll buy me a house, a dog, a car, Ferrari. Okay, keep dreaming, keep dreaming. This is okay. This is good one. I like to be a dreamer. <laughs> so. Uh, so when you search the internet, what factors do you consider when you select a search engine? Okay, what are the factors do you consider to search, uh, to, uh, to search or to choose? A search? Quick results. Quick results. Results that have the identical keywords that I typed. Accurate. Yeah, so quick, accurate results. Uh, trustworthy resources. Trustworthy resources. Accuracy. 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 Options. Options. Valid options. This is a good one. Options. I like um, Stronger, better, faster. Um, so the faster it brings the results, the stronger it gets it. Um, it, it, it uses the, you know, their search engines, their search in, uh, certain ways, search keywords you have to use, like positive, positive, negative signs, stuff like that. So if a, like a search engine uses that, that shows that this engine is like professional and you know secure enough that you can use it. Uh, yeah, trustworthy. Uh, I think for me is uh, most important to be exact and uh, accurate and uh, speed. And, and speed is yeah. uh, the real resources, I think. Yeah. Reliable. Yeah. Uh, I agree with them. <laughs> Easy to use. Easy to use. Excellent. Have to be secure. Have to exactly accurate. Exactly. And fast. And fast. And fast. And fast. Fast and uh, I cannot. I can find what I want. Okay. Fast and gives me what I want. Sometimes you misprint uh, a word, or sometimes you don't use the exact term. Uh, yeah. So the doodle can correct you correct you and say, did you mean? Exactly. 
This is a good one. So it tells me what I need. Okay, good one. So now uh, let's quickly look at the article. I uh, summarized the article for you and then... Yeah, they, they Google it, okay, and change the logo all, every, every time. Okay, so this article is uh, telling us or traces the history of one of the most successful new companies uh, of our time, which is Google. So if you type into Google search engine the question, how does Google work, you will find that Google uses clusters of trained pigeons to compute the relative value of web pages faster than human editors or machines-based algorithms. Do you think this is true? No. They use pigeons? No. But or butterfly? No. Okay, do you think they use this? No. Okay, so actually this is what they, this is what you will find exactly written on their web uh, page. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> well, you can uh, try it on your mobile because we don't have that. This is another way of telling us, we're not going to tell you Exactly. This is... Uh, manipulating yeah. us yeah. by saying, no, we're not going to tell you our secret. Okay. Uh, let's explain how Google works, if that's okay. I know how to... Okay, in your presentation? Uh, no, it's not presentation. Okay. Um, so can I just, like, throw it? Joey, because okay, it's kind of long story. Can I just, like, shorten it and just, like, draw it? Okay, come and draw it. So, Heba, volunteer to show us how Google works okay. in, in drawings. take more time because this server contains data, 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 and it's not only based like as Google, it's not only based in California, it's based in New York, it's based in um, Colorado, like all different places, like more like maybe the whole 50 states. So you as user, you go to do this, and when you look for something, they find like this server looks like does the same thing with a protocol with all these like you know data stuff it depends on the region if you see google kuwait google and you find like it's like written under it like this is google and they have something kuwait on it because um, in order to you as a user in kuwait for example to be able to use this and you have this old data the government like blocks stuff like which it finds it improper according to religious or you know map reviews so they block certain stuff Watch this is our reading too. Yeah. stuff. It blocks stuff on, on this data. So whenever you find they show you only the, the proper stuff, okay. you as people in Kuwait are allowed. Oh, sorry, this is USA. Uh, USA will block, be blocked certain other stuff, but not the same stuff maybe that Kuwait and, and France is the same thing. So you, you use your protocol to get to the server. The server will use a protocol to get to the data and goes it back and that's... And that's why you have a timing, like 0.34 seconds and stuff in the, um, you know, search. And this is how search engines, like not only Google, most search engines. Um, Dogfield um, is a pretty known one. Um, there is Bing. Um, AOL, people actually still use it. Yahoo. Um, what else? I mean, these are mostly used. Dogfield is, like, commonly used after Google worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, Heba, for this contribution. Okay, so if we look at the other part or the actual uh, story about this, we will find that the Google story begins in 1996 at Stanford University in California when two graduate students, Larry Page and Sergey Brand, wanted to find a better way to search websites. 
Current research engines rank uh, search results according to how frequently the search words appeared on a page. This was the state in nine, or this was the case in 1996. So, if someone links to a page, then the page has at least some importance. But if a very important website links to a page, that indicates even greater importance. So they wanted everyone to join. They wanted, sorry, to uh, everyone to link and relate to their pages, and th thus be able to display lots and lots of knowledge and information. Exactly. So, but could Google make money? Gina's question. Okay. Yeah, at the beginning, no one was interested at all in this search engine. And uh, finally, a uh, free search engine that worked well quickly attracted users an increase of about 50% each month. But that required investing in more computing power. They need huge computing power. That's why they resorted into having thousands here to avoid this expense. They uh, purchased thousands of ordinary PCs and tried to attach, actually this is a picture from a server, this is a server room, okay, but the, uh, you got the idea. They attached thousands of PCs and they ignored if, uh, ignored a, mis a malfunctioned one. If someone is not working, oh, sorry, uh, if, uh, if any one of these PCs uh, is not working or is now down, the server is not Reach, uh, or the uh, connection is not reaching, they totally ignore it instead of uh, going and replacing. Yeah, going and replacing. Now they have a regular like this was at the beginning, in order to make money, only at the beginning. Okay, so they wanted to reduce the cost. So only at the beginning. No, but they resorted to servers. Exactly, should be ignored. Drop it. Yeah, exactly, right. drop it. it and it. Okay. It's bypasses it, and that's, okay. exactly. that's a faulty unit. I'm not dealing with it. Exactly. So, at the beginning, this was one of the genus questions, how they, redu how they reduce the cost and try to make money. So, but this didn't make money. Okay? How did they make money? Exactly. Even with operating costs kept down, the company still needed to generate cash. So one obvious tactic was to sell advertising. This is Torfa's point of view. Okay, and, and investors. Okay, this is Marion's point of view. Like, the more people use it, the more, the more people, the more, the more people use Google. Exactly. The more companies will attract. Okay, there is this thing that they have done that is And this generated interest, and this generated interest in Google. Okay, but uh, research shows that large banner ads, when they use this banner ads and bob up ads, seem more annoying to the users than profitable for advisors. True, I think okay. uh, This is a terrible feature in Google, actually. Okay. Google Chrome is the official, Chrome, yeah. yeah, it's an official Google browser. They made specially uh, an app world for that, and it does include apps which makes you block ads. So you basically can open the whatever website you like Fox, like um, yes, and there's also ad block which blocks everything you don't want to watch ads. So you, you can block it. Google gives you this option now. Um, 2012, they did it. So yeah. You're talking about blocking information. I'm talking about drop on, uh, Dropbox to share information. Share. No, no, no. Information will be shown. You know, at it's just the blocking the extra. You know, what I mean, I mean, there's does not include it. Like, uh, doesn't it's not included to Google, and people just like show it off in some hacking way to make it show like it's Google. So they find it revealing that they sell the products. Okay. So let's skim the text quickly. Yeah. Okay. But uh, now, until we uh, uh, prepare this, just skim the text quickly to decide the sentence is true or false and come up with an answer for a WH question in exercise B. So I want you to skim the text quickly to answer exercise A about true or false and exercise B 
about WH questions to uh, uh, scan, skim and scan, scan the, the questions. Uh, sorry, scan the text to answer the questions. So I know I need you to read the sentences and the question first, and then go for the passage and try to elicit the information. This is eliciting the information. Okay, Gina, come. Have you finished? Skimming and scanning? No, <laughs> don't skim. Just answer. Larry Page and Surgery Brand studied their behavior of pigeons to design their search engine. False. False. What, what do you think is uh, the truth statement? They, they, didn't, they didn't tell us. They didn't study the behavior. Oh. What they did was actually, it's uh, if someone links to a page, then the page has some importance. It says here that Bryn, uh, the Brennan page designed a search engine that crawled, that could crawl the web, it's like investigates or not, without studying any behavior. It downloads every web page and analyzes its relevance to, the, to you exactly. with using using a secret concept, the changing formula. They change the formula in which it analyzes and retrieves information. Not to be traced. For not to be traced. Okay. Kate and Brian uh, stayed the head of competitors, uh, competitors and uh, three testers by uh, regularly modifying their search engine. True. Uh, it implies that Yahoo made a mistake when it did not buy Google for one million dollars. Uh, true. This one. Uh, there is, uh, number four. Google result page uh, give pro. pro, pro, pro priority to adver advertisers over other than uh, types of results over other types of results I think they uh, I think no they no, no, yeah yeah they yes how many pages is used more often yeah, exactly. Is, yeah. exactly okay so number five is my answer number five uh, Google makes its uh, money by loading every search uh, results page with advertisement. True. Makes its money by loading every search result? No, both. Page with advertisement. Google is no longer a privately held company. Um, I think it's false. It's no longer a privately held company. Uh, this means it's not private. It, it has some stock markets and people buy stocks. This is true or false? Yeah, they, they, uh, it's not uh, limited companies anymore. It's a uh, uh, demutualized, demutualized company. Google would like to make it possible for users to read many different kind of books online. True. The reading predicts that Google will soon face functional problems. I think it's false. Problems. Yeah, it's false. Yeah. Exactly. They are making. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Or uh, or competitors. They are going to face competitors later on. And WH question, this is to check your answers. What about the WH questions based on your scanning? Huh? Did you do this? Yes. Uh, they started in a, a read the question. Yes. Where did the two founders of Google get the start? Get the start? Where did the two founders of Google get the start? Project. Uh, they started their project uh, in, an, uh, in a garage. Exactly in a garage. Where? Uh, in uh, California. California. So they were in the States. Uh, no, yes, it's uh, Exactly. Good one. Uh, search engine. Uh, uh, the word uh, that they train pigeons to compute. Uh, train pigeons. Uh, this is this wasn't true. Okay, this is only for the same. Actual for five. Huh? 
crawl, exactly. Line 46. In what year was Google founded? In 1996. Uh, 1990. No, 1998, two years after they started. The two uh, students started in 1990. Uh, after two years, it says here in the reading. That's why you have to be accurate. Okay, after two years, they established their own company. Okay, expect this. I want you to expect this in the reading. Okay. Based on your understanding, you understand that they started to think about the idea in 1996. But the actual foundation for their company was two years later, which is 1998. Okay? Line 49. Okay. And number five. Yes, please. Number four, sorry. Number four. Oh, I want to answer number five. Okay. Uh, uh, can you ask, who is going to answer number five? Yes or no? <laughs> what does uh, I... Number five. Did Google lose money during the year when uh, the dot-com bubble burst? So Google, do you consider Google as a bubble? Remember when we started economic bubble? Do you consider Google as a bubble? No. No, why? Because it lasted for about more than 10 years. Exactly. It, it's lasting up till now. It's more than 10 years. Yeah, or near 15 years. Okay, so number four. Okay, what does IPO stand for? Uh, it stands for a company arranged for an intentional Initial public offering. Excellent. It stands for initial public offerings by companies. And the last one. Did Google have a lot of debt at the time the article was written? I don't think so. No, excellent. excellent one. I don't think so. So, analyzing criteria. Okay, what's meant by the word criteria? Here, this is to check your answers quickly. We're going to analyze criteria. What's meant by the word criteria? Um, criteria can mean sometimes a standard that something is held up to, or um, a, 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 you know, data, or yeah, free data. Okay, not only data. Okay. That's it. That's really like there's language meaning and then the computer meaning. That's it. Okay. So here we will see that, for example. A criterion, which is the singular form for the word criteria, a criterion is a condition or description used when making judgment. I want to judge that this is effective or not. This is working good or not. So I use certain criteria. Okay? Criteria, this is a plural form for the word criterion as a singular form. So, for example, for Google, Google meets many criteria for success, such as, it has millions of customers. So, what are the high performance criteria indicators for Google? The high performance indicator for Google saying that it functions effectively or with high performance uh, level is first millions of customers. So, number of customer it counts. Number two, it has successful product. The product it counts. So, when you judge, when you want to judge any company, was it, whether it's successful or not, you need to see the products, uh, the quality of the product. You need to see the number of target customers, and it generates billions of dollars revenue. And you need to see profit because if it has large number of customers and if it has uh, marvelous products with high quality and producing it with high quantity, but it's not gaining profit, then this is a not performance indicator. This uh, company is not functioning, uh, is not achieving profit and it, uh, thus it's uh, not achieving or uh, having this high performance uh, uh, criteria. Also, it's financially sound, stable. It's financially sound and stable because no debt and lots of cash. It has lots of cash and no debt at all. And it has high market capitalization market shares. It has high market capitalization. It has 
huge uh, capital. You know, this is related to the money. Yeah, the budget. It's uh, their budget. Lots, lots of people uh, bought from the stock market. So now I want you to tell me about these criteria here on page 118. Can you look at the criteria mentioned here on page 118? Here, let's consider the long-term survival of Google. Do you think they are going to survive or they are going to be absolute one day? So you're going to write yes or no if you're, and question mark if you're not sure. Read the, these criteria that indicates whether a company is likely to survive and grow and skim the reading again to identify which criteria Google meets by answering yes, they meet this criteria or no, they don't, uh, uh, or Google, it doesn't meet this criteria or maybe we're not sure. Okay, let's start number one. Customers and market share. Does the company have a large customer base? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. A market capitalization. If the company is publicly, publicly traded, does it stock have a high value? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Huh? Number three. Uh, business model. Does the company have a business model that will lead to profit? What's the business model? Number four. Yes. Yes. Uh, growth. Does the company have potential for growth uh, on its core business? Yes. Potential for growth. Yeah, it can be yes or it can be we're not sure because uh, we're, we're, it's something related to the future. So we can't really predict. So maybe yes or question mark. Both are acceptable. Expansion. Uh, can the company expand into new markets uh, either uh, through developing new products or uh, uh, acquiring existing ones? I think it should be yes or no because it's some kind of prediction. I mean, it's yes or it's a question mark. It's a big yes. They just made Google glasses. They wear, you can wear glasses and you can like talk on Skype through your eyes. It's a big yes. I'm me. Again, because it's based on prediction, it can be a question mark or it's yes. But it happened. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be in the market next week, next year. Everybody will like talk to themselves in the glass. Oh, man. Um, number six or seven. Uh, does the company have enough cash to fund current and future of, um, operations? Um, not sure. Uh, well, the, I don't know. I mean, that's, that product is still not, you know. Like now, yes. Now they have cash. Hmm. Yes, please. Uh, debt, does the company have a uh, meaning manageable amount of debt? We don't know. We don't know? Okay, but actually they can manage debt. Do, do they have that? No. So, yes, they can manage debt. No, no, we're talking about this reading, based on the reading. In the reading, they said they are surviving well. They have no debt. That's why they are a profitable company and they are uh, having high performance. All of these. Co competitive advantage? advantage. I, uh, is it difficult for other companies to imitate this company? I think they could imitate, but because they are number one also, I, it will be like on this side here. Yes. Now, no. Yeah, actually, yeah. based on this article, now. Number nine, trademark. Does the company have a recognized name or logo? Yes. Yes, they have it. Okay. Who's going to answer this? Number ten. Yes. Management. Can, be the, can the company survive changes in management? Question mark. We, don't, we can't tell. Talent. Can the company hold onto, the, onto its talent or attract new talent? Question mark because he says the bigger the company grows, the talent becomes diluted. And what's meant by diluted? It's like getting lost in the in the mass. Exactly. <laughs> not, not being yeah, like they use delusion. Exactly. 
disappeared, the, uh, the elusive means disappeared. So uh, let's start now, okay, the second reading. Uh, I want you to do the exercise about the vocabulary uh, here. The exercise is A, B, A, B uh, as homework. And let's do C before the uh, reading too. Let's do C. So A and B as homework, fill in the gaps and match for the, uh, these words. And let's do exercise number C. Here, some studies uh, where the sample may be biased. For example, what bias can be detected in the sampling methods? We have here researchers who want to know which candidate. We have here two candidates. Which candidate for public office is more popular? We have candidates A and candidate B. So, page 120. Okay. I want you to discuss, no, exercise number A and B as homework. We're going to discuss the homework next week. Okay, but in exercise number C, we're going to discuss it now. Here. Researchers want to know which candidate for public office uh, is more popular. We have two candidates, candidate A and candidate B. So they call people's home Monday morning, one day before the election. And candidate A is more popular in the telephone study. However, or but, candidate B wins Tuesday election easily. What happened? What do you predict? What was wrong about uh, this uh, research. What did, what did they do wrong? Hmm. They predicted, based on the search on phone calls, based on the phone calls, they predicted that uh, candidate A is going to ta uh, take the position. But actually, when the result of the voting appeared on, uh, on Tuesday's uh, uh, morning, they found that candidate B uh, won the election. Uh, they can never uh, depend on phone calls to determine whether he's going to win or not because you never know who's going to pick up the phone. Maybe, maybe the voters or the, the people who are going to vote are not uh, going to pick up the phone. Maybe they're the younger generations. Maybe the... Or, or older. When it gets to vote, they call first. They called on a, on a Monday morning. So people who are already out for le, or t out to their vo jobs, they will not answer the phone. Who are people in the age group that are able to vote? They will be out either voting. People who are eligible to vote, they would be out either to their work stations or to actually vote. So they will not have many voters at home sitting waiting for someone to answer the phone. That's, that's A. B is going to be about the who, who are the people, uh, the nature of the people who answered, uh, the nature of the people who answered the phone, their age groups, what makes it cultural background, plus, uh, plus it's going to be about the timing itself for the, for, the, for, for the call. Did they call early in the day, late in the afternoon, or later? Okay. Um, I think the people that were called were more these than they were A's. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like they were, like maybe they, uh, maybe B make, could be like a black guy and then he has a different culture and whatever and then that the whole area is black people. So candidate A was a white guy and why would... The nature of people they called might be uh, biased. Based on who based who's on calling. Others? Well, number one, um, I don't think that's even a way to we can like just say that. Um, to depend on. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, using a telephone study and um, election, like um, like the guy, other guy with, works it on the, um, just takes the elections the other day. You know, it doesn't even make sense. You, if you want to make sure that the both deserve a chance, you should make it in the both same way. You don't use, uh, yeah. Um, regarding number two, um, it might, it may come. It may Would you please read number two? Okay, so now we're done with number one. Okay, let's look at the study of number two. Uh, researchers wonder if cold winter weather might reduce um, 
arthritis, pain, um, the leading cause of disability for people over 55. So they compare sales of arthritis, pain, <laughs> arthritis, pain medication, of medicine during the winter in Utah and a cold state and Florida are warmer states. Uh, a sampling of pharmacies showed higher <laughs> arthritis, pain, <laughs> medication, sales in Florida. Should we trust this results of the study? Uh, I think uh, kind of yes, because it does make sense. People will try to be, you know, like they will, uh, they will have more pain because it's cold. Um, when it's hot, it doesn't have pain, but it just makes you like feel like all down. You know, what I mean, it's just kind of, it's kind of common sense, you know. So yeah, uh, Utah, it is a cold state and it snows there a lot, so it does make common sense. Um, you know, um, Florida, it will be less actually, and yeah, I mean, it's uh, higher arthritis pain medication. They uh, have this prescription or a huge number of prescriptions in Florida for arthritis pain. <laughs> no, I, I, I think uh, the, the, the people, the population of the uh, Utah is uh, younger than Florida. Mm -hmm. Good interpretation. Okay. Yeah. That's why they bought lots of medicine. Yes, about the average in uh, Utah is like um, people for 45 to 55 are more than people in Florida. Florida, many people like small generation, others moved in there. Can be. Okay, so it based on the age group. I, was, uh, I want to say what somebody said that maybe they use more the air condition, like in Kuwait, everybody is complaining for, for, for the pain they need, but it's the same, you know, the air conditions. Okay, maybe there are other factors like their air condition, using their uh, air conditions. Interesting point, I like this. is known to be the number one retirement state. Any American worker who is in his retirement, after after he gets his pension, they go. They say, okay, maybe I retire and move into Florida because it's warm. So uh, old people, yeah, it's warm and sunny. So old people go there and live there, and that's it. Happens even to people my age. I get it. If, if the AC was. But it's much more common in, uh, among elder because um, uh, you know when you you change weathers. Like when we go to, like let's say I go to the beach and then I come back home and the AC is on. Even at my age, my my bones and my knees. Yeah, exactly. So because, because of the AC, the yeah, air conditioning. They're talking about the medicine after I do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. So now we're going to start reading two. Okay. We have Lida and Nasim. Yeah, Nasim.
there is one who wins all our presentation, but it's okay. You have to play that to us. We're going to be okay? We are. Okay. We will present. Uh, our presentation is about Google. Uh, first of all, we will show you a video how Google was started. It's the fastest growing company in history, used by 400 million people a month. The internet search engine Google has turned its founders from students to multi-billionaires. Tonight, the money program does its own search on this extraordinary money-making machine and finds out how it's changed the lives of countless millions of people who now inhabit the world according to Google. And these are the guys who made it all possible. Google's founders, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, still in their early 30s and each worth an estimated £6 billion. Theirs is a dramatic tale which began 10 years ago when Larry and Sergey were both brilliant computer science students. If you're going to San Francisco. The two met on a day out from Sergey's university. Sergey was acting as tour guide for some prospective students, and Larry was in the group. Larry and Sergey developed a piece of software which they believed could revolutionize searching the internet. Larry and Sergey always believed their system was a winner. Lunchtime hockey in the car park was all part of how Google was going to be different. It's a revolution, and, you know, like the industrial revolution. Inside, the office was a playground of lava lamps and bouncy balls. Sergey himself created the Google logo with its childlike colors to remind users that Google wanted to be a force for good. In 2000, Larry and Sergey hit the jackpot and turned the corner from successful search engine to successful business. Their secret? A special system of advertising. So how does it work? Well, if you're trying to find out about, say, Stonehenge, here's what you get. These are ordinary search results. And over here is a list of ads. They're from companies who've picked Stonehenge as a keyword which triggers their ad to appear. They're businesses who all think someone searching for Stonehenge might also be interested in them. And that was how a humble student project became the fastest growing and one of the most profitable companies ever. by the search companies. But have you ever asked yourself what, what the word Google means? It means like, one, and then like ten zero, Exactly. Yes, the name Google originates from a misspelling uh, of the word Google. The number one followed by 100 zeros, which was meant to signify the amount of information the search engine was. focusing on their needs and giving them the, be the best products and service that they can. But it's also about doing the right thing more generally, uh, following the law, acting honor uh, honorably and uh, treating each other with respect. Generously, yes. That's why uh, they use this one uh, to uh, to be more successful and uh, expand their company. Okay. Uh, the first, the uh, astonishing Google. They, uh, they, they used to work in garage. This is the first picture of the garage, and then uh, it became the, one of the most. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
this is a famous company. Yes, uh, like uh, Essie Jobs, that uh, he also started uh, his business in a garage, and then uh, now one of the famous company in the world is Apple. Yes, they have a list. Uh, it's uh, ten, uh, ten things. They, they go back uh, each time for it. Uh, to, uh, they put it at the beginning when they established Google, and from time to time they go back for it. Uh, I will, I will mention only two, uh, focus on the user and everything will come after that. Better to make uh, one thing really good, a uh, good way. And for me, number eight is really uh, very, you know, I t took my attention. Uh, the needs for information transcends uh, for uh, all borders, means uh, we want to send all information without uh, looking that uh, there is a border or barrier in front of us. There are many who have raised questions about the ethics and legality of Google business practice. Uh, they are asking how, uh, how uh, their motto don't be evil and how they can get this money and uh, about their uh, ethics. Uh, Google make money, make, they make money, most of its money from paid advertising, uh, as you said. Uh, they also run the, this ads on website that practice in Google AdSense program. This advertised by Google for each click. Google keeps some of the money and passes the rest of the money uh, to the website that ran the ads. They also blesses, uh, places ads on the other side uh, that they run, like YouTube and Gmail. What if I can trick them? I can't go away. If I, like, say I own the company X, and company Y has an ad on Google, I can go and click on the okay, I'll opposing ad. We will see uh, you later. <laughs> Uh, yes, I will tell you uh, if you uh, be patient, okay. And um, uh, for this also, they have lots of policy. They think about how we can recognize this is a real customer from the fake one, okay. And uh, um, for this, um, uh, step by step, please. Okay, and um, for this mention, we said that they, they have lots of advert advertisement in fr uh, next to the each search we, we do. Uh, for example, I, I'll show here something. Um, sorry. How we can <laughs> minimize this? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be patient, please. <laughs> you, 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 uh, you know you're jumping very fast. Um, but uh, I, I don't know how can I use the... How we can go back? <laughs> we minimize this one. Okay. So, because I have to do this one, otherwise. <laughs> I will tell you. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here to uh, to clear up all your question in your mind. Okay. Yes. Just patient. Okay. Here uh, it's okay. In uh, here, for example, in uh, this uh, Google um, um, page, uh, page, yes, page engine. Uh, I want to search about university. For example, I type university. Okay. And let's see what result they give me. Here they give me less, uh, some kind of university, and on the left side, you can, as you can see, there is something I don't know, but uh, for my computer, it gives me lots of uh, advertisement of other rest of university. This advertisement make uh, lots of money for Google. How? Huh? Now we will answer you. For example, if um, me as a user go and uh, you know click on it in one of these advertisements here, um, they give me a link to that uh, a specific company. Okay, so uh, by each clicking that me as a user do it, Google takes money, the uh, uh, deducted money from the this company put the advertisement here. 
from a small amount of a penny until $30 for each click. So, um, but there is some kind of concern happen for advertiser here. They say, okay, we, we do uh, advertisement here, but we don't know. Uh, there are some other com uh, companies that uh, there are, that are compete with it, and uh, which it, uh, which with each other. And then uh, this uh, company, they want to, you know, make uh, lose on uh, other company. They just go and click. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is a problem happen and this is the concern of the advertiser. What would happen if uh, they are not the real customer and they want, you want to all the time take money f uh, from me? And then uh, Google for this one has an uh, answer. Let's watch this one. Hi, I'm David Baker. I'm the head of ads policy engineering at Google. We have a vested interest in creating the least intrusive and best ad experience for our users. That means showing you the right ads when you want them and doing our best to never show you ads that can be harmful. That's why our ads engineering efforts are so focused on protecting the user. This is a very difficult challenge, given the number of ads online, and there are a lot of malicious players. We've dedicated tens of millions of dollars and hundreds of engineers and policy experts to building systems and tools to detect violations of our policies. And when we find a scam, we don't just ban one ad, we banned the advertiser from ever working with Google again. In 2011, out of the billions of ads that were submitted to us, we shut down about 800,000 advertisers and more than 130 million ads for violating our policies. But how do we find them? Our first defense is automated systems that proactively catch scams by monitoring the content of each ad and scanning the advertiser's website before the ad is ever shown. When we detect a threat, our systems automatically seek out and find similar websites and scams, immediately broadening our reach. And quite often, our experts personally review complex or suspicious ads that our software has flagged, but which needed a real person to make a decision. Advertisers, users, and other authorities can report scams directly to our policy department and will respond as quickly as possible. We're committed to developing the best experience for our users and remain dedicated to earning your invaluable trust. And I wanted to drive this company mad and make them really pay Google enormous amounts of money. I would either keep clicking on them and that okay. would give Google the money or I would click the other company, the my, co the, my company, the opposing company and that also would harm them. Okay, if they have a program that can catch me, like this one was saying the IP address, they would know that Y or a Greg is constantly <laughs> clicking the page all the time. Time, other companies all the time clicking what for just uh, taking money for taking money of the com uh, company. They, uh, they call it uh, click fraud. This action they call it click fraud. It means they do by purpose to deduct lots of money for, from other. And as we saw, they have uh, um, sophisticated uh, program that uh, they're, uh, they're experts all the time sitting and they, you know, they checking that this is real customer or not. Okay, there is a, uh, one question rise here that, uh, uh, okay, what if they use a dif different IP address? Okay, we know that each uh, users that connect to uh, collect information from the search engine, we have a special in, uh, IP address. We saw in the TU-170, uh, I, I think. And then if, if they use different IP address, what would happen? They said, okay, we have, we thought about that, and they will answer you. <laughs> okay. But we do that, like in Twitter and in other accounts, whenever someone like is really anonymous, yeah.
Okay, that's that's um, that's something actually according to you know law, you can actually we can press charges against you uh, as Google. Uh, well, well, if you feel that you can't force, oh my God, if you if you. Okay. So, Okay. Uh, and uh, Mariam, this one for you. How does Google assure company to prevent fraud? Google assure advertiser that it has sophisticated software that identify fraudulent clicks and removes them before they are charged to the advertiser. Uh, uh, we wish that he uh, answered. They don't tell me and you that we find out software they have. <laughs> so they have some sophisticated software. Copyright law. The most complicated issue for, uh, from a legal standpoint is a copyright law. For example, in the U.S., any book is published after the 1923. It's protected by copy uh, law. So. Okay. And uh, we have. Um, have you ever checked uh, a book, uh, Google Book Search? Yes. Of course. For for uh, doing paper, we go uh, in Escolar and they give you lots of. Uh, uh, links to lots of books, paper, PDF files, everything. But um, here, there is one uh, problem. Uh, I mean, one concern again happened for uh, who they uh, uh, let their book to be usable in the search engine. What is the problem? Okay, me as a writer or a author, uh, claim that, um, yes, okay. Oh, okay. The, um, what is the, the um, let me finish. <laughs> Sorry. And then uh, they claim that, um, what if, if uh, we uh, leave uh, our book and let the people uh, use the book freely and they can use our uh, properties easily and make a copy and paste in their, uh, and, um, okay, we want to make money out of that. Uh, and Google has answer for this also. What is the answer? Uh, first of all, they made the Google book uh, for a special aims and uh, to make it easier for people to reach the books they want. The, uh, they can reach for it. Uh, maybe it's too old or students can't, uh, they need to write essays or to, uh, they need to get information very fast. So they won't go to library and search for days for information. So they can check Google books and find what they want. But the answer that they say, uh, okay. uh, they say um, whoever that doesn't like to use uh, other people, use their uh, properties easily, uh, you can remove. You have this right, you can remove whenever you want. And uh, they, also they solve this problem by this, uh, you know, thinking thought. Also, yeah. Google. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Not about the protection. Uh, Google you know? gave the writers, uh, they can't sell their books in Google. They can't. Yes. Uh, you, can, uh, you can sell, or whenever you don't like, you can remove, you can your, remove your book. This is. Uh, Okay, and about uh, YouTube. We know one of the most famous uh, uh, sites that we can share our video, our uh, music, our uh, whatever you like. This is YouTube now is uh, dominant uh, everywhere. And uh, since 2005, they uh, start uh, working, but now it's, I think it's very success successful within seven, eight years. And uh, Google uh, bought YouTube and uh, mm, I heard recently that YouTube is going to uh, make a channel, internet channel, uh, and uh, yeah. uh, yes, no, not now, but you can pay. Yes, uh, you can pay uh, two dollars pay, uh, two dollars per per month, and you can watch endless program like National Geography, documentaries, whatever you can, you can do. It. Mm. Yeah. And then, um, uh, and uh, one of the uh, services that Google gives is Gmail. Gmail is uh, pro uh, provide a very huge uh, capacity uh, rather than Yahoo or other uh, um, other, uh, I don't know, search engine, yeah. yes. And this Gmail also is um, um, very, very good, and, uh, and they start uh, April 1st, 2004, and but in 2007, uh, they make it uh, really practical. And uh, okay, this is free service, but how do they uh, make money out of this free service? Again, they, they say by advertisement. What is uh, this advertisement? Um, just back. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, mm, Google comes and see which kind of, uh, you, which kind of, um, you know, what is your interest? And according your interest, they send you, uh, you know, advertisement. And you go and click on it, and again you make money. They make money. Sorry. And uh, this is same process. But here, in uh, this kind of things, again, one concern arises. What is this concern is uh, the topic of privacy. This privacy is very important nowadays that we don't like anybody see our, uh, you know, what we have in our uh, private uh, uh, email, what is found, what is sent. And we have all the time as a user concern that, oh, uh, somebody is checking my email and uh, they want to send our, and uh, about this uh, privacy, I can show you something, uh, uh, video is, I think, interesting. Maison rouge, balcon, plan. Ik zie geld, ik zie uh, transacties, maar ik kent je rekeningnummer van buiten. Ik denk dat ik het wel weet. Je staat wel negatief op je bankrekening. Ja? 9-7. Last month, nee. you spent 200 euro's on alcohol. Vorige maand. 300 euro aan kleding gespendeerd. 8, 5 ja. voor een huis dat van eigenaar gaat veranderen. 250.000 euro. Ja, maar eigenlijk. 41. Ja. De juist? Ja, dat is juist. Oh mijn 
God. Oh man. Ah, das Video eng. 